Uh, let's see. Uh, radiation burns. <laughs> what? Do you have radiation burns? Yeah, I do. Really? From what? Yeah, well, uh, my 100 mile bike ride I, I was, uh, <laughs> did, not, uh, did not put the right screen on. That's, that's the UV. right shielding on. <laughs> that's UV. <laughs> yeah, it burned me. <laughs> radiation burns. You're a funny guy, you know that? <laughs> Shall we? Shall we? Shall we begin? Let's yeah. uh, let's just yeah. kick it off. <laughs> okay, so uh, here is me, Matthias Beckers, and up top of me. Uh, good afternoon, morning, evening. This is Alan Medsker in Chicago Land. Yeah, and today we are really unscripted. We just <laughs> we just did our yeah. cold start. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to mention. Uh, so I've been working on this on this um, this document. You've seen it, and uh, I'm finally getting some good feedback on it. So that's great. And basically, uh, so right now I'm trying to get it published on the Energy for Humanity website, and I'm going to. You know, create oh, a okay. presentation to accompany it, and then I'm going to take it on the road in the Netherlands. So I am going to visit all the universities and, uh, you know, societies that want to talk about energy stuff and such. And I uh, hope that we can, you know, enact some some change. I'm not, not sure that that's going to happen, but, you know fortune favors the bull right and the, and there and then there was this other yeah. news this week about the uh, so Vattenfall which uh, which also owns nuclear power plants by the way is now has merged with uh, another Dutch uh, power company and they just announced that they are building a 700 megawatt offshore wind park and oh it's offshore okay yeah it's offshore so it's not onshore onshore wind is not really that great in the netherlands um you don't have that much land yeah well we don't have that much land and it's not that windy and you know uh believe that onshore wind gets like 24 percent capacity factor so hmm. it's not that not not that great but the funny thing is, and, the, and I, I don't know, uh, let's see, Vattenfall, I'm going to search for it, um, because they mentioned what the price was going to be. And, oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, not, not, to, not to cost to construct it, but what the electricity price was going to be. Uh, let's see. Uh, offshore grid. Oh, and the funny thing is, the 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 the. So, in order to attach one of these seven hundred megawatt wind farms, you need to attach it somehow. So they have to build a new transmission network in the North Sea, and that's going to cost a couple of billion. <laughs> yeah, those things are always. Uh, they seem to be left out all the time. Yeah. The pricing. People exactly. talk about it. <laughs> so it's uh, it's not going to be cheap and the cost of electricity let's see if i can find it and 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 they are making this big deal as if it's so great that they can do it without without uh subsidies but that's not necessarily true so either way they're going to get their money whether the government pays them a subsidy to build it or whether the ratepayer pays more for the electricity, you know, because the cost will remain yeah. the same. And, and, and so uh, they're saying, well, this is great because this is a zero subsidy offshore wind farm, which, by the way, is going to cost 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's the cost to make the electricity, right? So it's ten cents per kilowatt hour. Oh, or, that's a, is that U.S. or or Europe? No, European. So it's 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 okay, like so twelve it's or thirteen cents U.S. Yeah, 
And that's wow. just for the electricity. That's not for just the grid charges, right. not for the taxes, nothing of that. <laughs> that's crazy expensive. Wow. So uh, that's like not that that that's around what I pay for electricity yeah, with all that stuff. It all right. And I'm I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find where it says that it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a hundred euros per megawatt hour, and I've, I've I've been there somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. So that's not going to be cheap, and I bet that it's going to be built for about I don't know three or four thousand euros per kilowatt. So it's going to it's going to cost a big chunk of money, um, probably somewhere. You know, between two and a half, three, maybe three and a half billion euros just to get it built. That's a 700 megawatt wind plant with a capacity factor of 35% ish. So, in effect, it will be a 200 something megawatt wind farm um, at a very high cost and which is going to be paid by us, the ratepayers. But that's something that they forget, you know, they omit. They just say, oh, it's so great. You don't have to pay anything. Um, we don't have to pay anything uh, because, you know, it's going to be. Uh, it, we don't have to pay any subsidies, but they forget to mention that the, the cost for electricity is going, going up by like four per, four cents. And on a total, you know. Of twenty two cents, adding four cents is a lot. <laughs> it's actually yeah, a lot. that's a pretty uh, pretty good kick. Yeah. So so what are you working on? Because 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 you've got some some stuff going on in Ohio right now. Well, there are things going on in Ohio. We seem to be down to the last minute. Uh, it seems like it's always the last minute there. Um, but uh, the uh, owner of the nuclear plants is saying they will continue with their plans to turn them off, but that there's still a chance for the legislature to pass some legislation to provide some, uh, some relief for them and allow them to keep them open. Uh, you know, allow them to tell their shareholders that they're going to keep them open without, you know, getting kicked out by their shareholders. So, um, and there's one Senator, uh, I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but uh, she's holding out for an increase in the um, renewable energy mandate uh, from 6% to 8.5%, I think. And uh, So it's not re really a reasonable thing for her to be doing unless she is already interested in shutting down the nuclear plants, which seems like it might be the case. Mm. So uh, we have been calling and texting and emailing people in her district and uh, people in the area to let her know that they want to keep those things open. And uh, I haven't heard anything today, so I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't know what the actual deadline is, uh, but they are legislators are in session and, and working on that, I think. So, yeah. Um, I had one person tell me that I called to, to remind her to respond to the, you know, to, take the email information and, and contact our senator. And she said she thought it was a done deal until that person stepped up <laughs> and <laughs> demanded her, a, a, demanded her, a, 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 you know, amendment to the bill. Yeah. So, and it turns out that that amendment to the bill would result in maybe something like $120,000 for her district in additional renewal, renewable, Man, uh, mandate subsidy money somehow or another and just a, just this little bitty teeny bit of of cash that uh, she's gonna close 90 percent of the clean energy in ohio for so i don't know it's it's, it's hard it's, to understand yeah so so i was somebody somebody was you know making a big deal on on facebook today about you know 
that the U.S. was planning to to extend their or or, or to 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 basically um, you know make it possible to keep nuclear plants open for a hundred years. So extending extending it from yeah, the to license 100. extension, right? Yeah, but but here's the thing: it, up until now, none of your power plants have reached fifty years, right? I mean. Peach, uh, uh, no, I don't Peach think bottom. any of them are 60 um, yet, right? Yeah. The, there's some, there's a number are licensed for that long. Yeah. The one, um, some the I one, think there's some that are licensed for 80, but they're not to their 60-year mark yet. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, the oldest one was the one in, you know, in the neighborhood of Washington. Um, uh, Washington to, State? No, no, no. The city. Uh, East D.C.? Yeah, there's an Oyster Creek. I Oyster think. Creek. Oyster Creek, yeah. exactly. That one was 59, no, 49 years old. 49. Oyster Creek was 49 yeah, there's, years old. Uh, all of them have a number of decades under their belt. Yeah. Over here. Um, unless you count running time, there's uh, one at uh, Watts Bar, that uh, the one additional reactor that they put in mothballs after they started building it and mm -hmm. they finished it up oh, yes. a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, it took like 25 years it, or something like that. It was yeah, but it's bar two, right? Yeah, I think it's two or three maybe. Um, I can't remember, but uh, it's 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 newly turned on, newly finished and newly turned on, but but it's uh, um, but it was started decades ago. Yeah, so. right. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's here. Oyster Creek Generating Station uh, went online December first, nineteen sixty nine. So that's that's fifty years, slightly slightly more than slightly less than fifty years ago. Yeah, forty nine and change. Right? Yeah, and that was the oldest one that you had running. And the funny thing is, it only cost four hundred and eighty eight million U S dollars in two thousand and seven dollars. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, some of those were built for a song. Yeah. Very small amount of money. There are a lot of things that are different now, but uh, not enough things that are validly different, in my opinion, to result in the difference in price that uh, we expect to pay now, even after we learn how to build them. Right. I think there's a lot of additional regulation that is is uh, causing additional costs, um, and we need to find a happy medium there and uh, and stop moving the goalposts on that too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. oh, but uh, then we have to start all over again with new new reactor models. <laughs> Oak Harbor, that's where David Bassey's at. There it is. I've got it on screen right now. It's a single unit reactor. That's it's a single unit power plant. But shouldn't matter that much. Keep it open, people from Ohio. Be smart. Well, and it's it's really, you know, all the costs are sunk in all of those. Yeah. And it's it's you know if you look at you know how much it costs to create that much clean energy that's actually reliable, it's just you know it's so high. The kids, the kids are coming the, home. Any subsidy that you would have. Yeah. We've got some trespassers here. <laughs> there, there it is. There it is. Come on, Just come like on. in the olden days. Hey, <laughs> that's my that's my youngest son is Luke, and he, he lost a tooth as you can see. Oh, is that is that mean money in uh, in another one? Uh, yeah, it, over here it, means money. It, it does. It's like a two fairy, you know. Yeah. What was yeah, a, what was the second plant in uh, in Ohio? Um, second plant is Davis Bessie. No, the other one. Uh, oh, the other one is uh, oh, Perry. Perry. Yeah. Perry is. And uh, where is it? Let's see where Perry. Uh, is. they're all both on Lake Erie, around oh. uh, not too far from each other. Right. So it's both on the I, north. I think Perry is closer to Cleveland. I don't remember. Yeah, that's possible. Let's see. 
if I can find them. So, so right now, basically, Generation Atomic and a couple of other pro-nuclear activists are making an effort to keep it, to keep both of them alive by trying to sway one senator, right? That's what it seems like it's, it's down to. Yeah. Um, I think the House has already voted and passed it? it, and the Senate has to pass it. Do you think it's a done deal? I don't think it's a done deal at all, uh, but I'm hopeful. I'm more hopeful than I was maybe a week or two ago. Yeah. Um, it, in the meanwhile, I'm trying to find Perry, but I'm finding... Hard not to get... I, I'm I'm mainly finding gas and coal instead. <laughs> it's a uh, lake... Lake County, Ohio. It's uh, it's up towards Erie, Pennsylvania. So you oh, go all up. the way. It's up on the up right. the uh, northeast corner of uh, Willow Sock, of Ohio. Lake. It's pretty close to that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This seems like yeah. a nuclear power plant. I yeah, found you it. Maps and, uh, yeah, I found it. It's Perry. Yeah. Yep, Perry Nuclear, and that's a dual unit one. So that's two. Uh, Two pressurized water reactors, probably. Yeah, a double unit. Are those the only two reactors at Lake Erie? No, that can't be. Um, Fermi, I think, is on Lake Erie, too. It's in Michigan, though. Yeah. Um, and so, there's a crap ton of coal ports. <laughs> this is iron, yeah. by the way. This is iron. I believe that this is iron ore or something like that. That's definitely not. This is coal. Coal is black. Iron ore is mostly brownish, reddish. I'm looking if I can find any more. Oh, this is a gas plant. You know, gas plant. Oh, no, this is a coal plant. This is a coal plant. There's lots of uh, lots of stuff along the lake there. It's it's uh, a pretty industrial area. Yeah, kind of the Rust Belt they call it. It's part. It's kind of part of that. Yeah. Um, well, and, you, uh, you know, you know, coal plants are much easier to find. There's Enrico. So Enrico is a boiling yeah. water reactor. But there's also yeah, and they had a fast reactor there yeah. uh, for a little while. Yeah, I um, see. I see it. It's a they tiny had some. Uh, they had melted down. They fixed it and they ran it again for a little while, and then they shut it down. And then they shut it down. Um, yeah, they had a problem with uh, there's like a little piece of metal from one of the assemblies of some sort mm. got got some somewhere down towards the bottom of the reactor vessel, and they and it and it caused some trouble. All oh, right. Um, and they, they actually had a partial meltdown of it. Um, it didn't, you know, nothing escaped and nothing, nobody was hurt. And they just had to rebuild some stuff and they did it. Life they went on. It. Yeah. Right? Which they ought to be rebuilding those things when uh, that happened. That's what they should have done with the Three Mile Island. Yeah. Two, I wondered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was it two that melted? I can't remember. I can never remember which one. Yeah, the EBRs. I, I believe it's EBR1. The EBR2 yeah. ran for like, I don't know, 35 years or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Years. Yeah. You're talking about in Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. The EBR yeah I was talking there. about the one that they ran at Fermi. Yeah. At, on the lake. Oh, right. There's a reactor there. They had fast breeder reactor and now now i'm i'm hovering i'm hovering over toronto then i have to move north from there and Stop then there, you yeah. got pickering and pickering is a giant <laughs> it's a giant yeah those, those, those candy reactors aren't that big and they just gang a whole bunch of them together yeah exactly and it's uh pretty uh pretty amazing cool isn't it but that's not the only one because there's Pickering and then a couple of couple of miles upwards you get Darlington, which is slightly smaller. Still a big one though. Yeah. 
the big lakes in the U.S. and Canada are a great source of cooling water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do the job. And uh, I mean, you still have people that are, you know, trying to fight having anything nuclear next to a lake, but they do, uh, they have a pretty effective way to cool. It doesn't really, you know, hurt anything. There's, the water does get, you know, it's warmer when it comes out than when it went in, of course, but, uh, but not that much. Not that much. I don't think we've ever had to shut, shut them down around there. Any of those plants have never had to shut down or curl, curtail because of, you know, because of the, the temperature of the uh, outgoing water. Yeah. Water. There, there have been reports by some people that said, oh, you know, France is in, in trouble because of the because of the hot water and such. But yeah, yeah but but that's that's a regulatory no, thing. Not. That's not because those yeah. that's not because the water is too hot to cool the reactors. It's just because regulations for regulation's sake, they just, you know, don't want there to be more hot water put into the yeah i mean you gotta put the limits somewhere and so they do it and yeah. then uh you know because things are getting warmer now it's uh we we arrive at those numbers sooner than we used to yeah that's true right now i am looking for indian point and i found it so there indian it is. point is uh i think there's going to be some new attention to indian point yeah. is it now some slated point. to close or what is yeah, happening? no, it's scheduled to close. Uh, Cuomo wants to close it. The Democratic governor of New York State. Yeah, it's kind of his thing. He, uh, for some reason, he's got it out, got it in for nuclear in general, I think. But uh, that plant in particular, and there's, you know, nothing really wrong with it. It's they've found some tritium in some of the test wells, but you know, tritium is basically harmless, particularly mm. at those levels. Mm -hmm. And it's a test wells. It's not anything public. And um, but this this organization called Riverkeeper is uh, very uh, very aggressively trying to uh, trying to get uh, get all of the nuclear shut down. But at that one in particular. And so um, unless anything, you know, unless something changes, um, you know, you'd have to have like a Bill De Blasio or an, you know AOC or somebody. Mm. Uh, come and you know Alexandria uh, Ocasio Cortez. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just somebody with a really high profile would have to challenge him on that. Yeah, in order for it to change. And yeah, but uh, I, I wouldn't. I, would, I don't know if that's uh, in the cards or not. Yeah, especially with the last name you just you just named it, and then it, it's not it's not a it's not a given, you know. It's not a given at all. Well, and it's, you know, it's 25% of the New York City metropolitan area energy. I mean, it's a huge amount of energy that comes out of those things. And, and they're just running, and they're just produ providing, you know, emissions-free energy. And it's the stupidest thing. It's just, it's so hard to understand. Yeah, it is. <sighs> So I don't know if there's hope for that or not, but I guess until they actually turn it off, there's hope. Um, it's, it's just regression. But, you know, I you look know. at this. You just see these, you know, this one one little bitty parking lot that's got, you know, some casks on it. Yeah. That's like all the fuel. You know, there's some in the pool inside, of course, but then uh, there's just this tiny amount of, of – uh, of used fuel that's all safely stored and and ready to get fissioned in a fast breeder reactor or something. Yeah. And they just don't. Uh, people are just too too concerned about stuff to really pay attention to the actual science. I guess maybe mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yeah. It 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 it, it just strikes me as. It's it's just the 
you know, they, they have this idea that they want to do something about climate change, but at the same time, they just don't understand that closing nuclear is like extremely counterproductive in this regard. The worst, worst single thing you could do. Yeah, absolutely. Right now I'm looking at Pilgrim. I, 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 I was, I was a little bit lost because I was looking at it in, uh, in Cape Cod, in but it's actually in yeah, it's actually in the other side of the bay. No more water vapor coming out of that cooling tower. Yeah, actually, I don't think I had a cooling no, tower. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's uh, it's 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 actually cooled by the ocean, so it's nice and cool. Nope. Uh, and that was was that the only nuclear power plant? It was the only one left in Massachusetts. Um, I think there was another one, and I can't remember the name. It was uh, one of the Yankee ones. Yeah. So you had Vermont Yankee, and, and I believe that you had Maine Yankee, right? Yeah, Maine Yankee was one that got shut down a while back, quite a while back. Um, he was he was just screaming. I don't know what screaming. happened. Yeah, he was screaming. He hurt himself or something like that. I don't know what it was. No. Seems okay now. No, yeah, there it is. Uh, so. My ice cream was falling. Oh. <laughs> and then my mother, she washed it. <laughs> uh, and, the, uh, and, the, and mom washed the ice cream. <laughs> so, come. Oh, come that, is that yeah, what happened? The ice cream got... So uh, many English. No, come. Up. Like Dropped. <laughs> well, so we're <laughs> we're almost we're almost in uh, thirty minutes now. So uh, I, I I believe that you know the uh, the cascade of uh, child uh, act, act, act activities in the, in the, in my home is going to escalate soon. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, they they seem like they're being allowed to stay up late tonight. Yeah, it's it's ha it's half past eight right now, and uh, but it's so it's, there was uh, there was Yankee Row. Yankee Row was in Massachusetts, and that closed in ninety two. Oh right, so that's a goal. After thirty two years of operation, and then uh, there was another one that uh, was proposed but never built. It was a it's going to be two 1100 megawatt PWRs. Right. I'm looking at it here. I've got a nuclear town hall. NRC competes, follow up, business, international people, politics, opinions. So oh, this is just some kind of a. Let's see if I can see something about the nuclear stuff in Ohio. Because it would be a damn shame if they if they closed down Perry and what was it Davis Bassey yeah Davis Bassey yeah I mean they they aren't that old right I mean uh, I mean they're they I mean, they've got plenty of license time left and they can be relicensed Davis Bessie's the one where there was a a um, a leak of the carbonic acid or something and mm -hmm. it, it was boric something boric it's, acid it's boric acid probably yeah that's right and uh and it was on it was dripping under the head mm. the reactor head and it actually made quite a bit of uh headway before as, as it were no pun intended <laughs> before they found it and during an, an inspection yeah and uh, they had to replace the head so if they close it down it an expensive in, thing. if they close it down in 2020 it it'll be forty two years old. Okay. So that's that's so it's, uh, less than half of what it probably could be if you yeah. left it open. And Perry Nuclear. Let's see what Perry does. Perry. Wait a second. Commission date. Oh, Perry's even younger. Oh my gosh. That would be a that would be to a complete and utter shame. Do well, and really, I mean, it, until you get to be, you know, until the plant is, you know, the, the concrete base pad and everything is, you know, 80 or 100 years old, you really, 
you know, the age of the plant doesn't really determine it's, no. you know, it's not like an aging plant. Everything's been replaced yeah. with the exception of the pressure vessel. And that's, you know, they, they, they inspect those things pretty carefully. So, but are, are, uh, is, is it, is it known whether they want to, whether they want to close it or not? Perry, because yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that, that thing started operation in 1987. Yeah, um, both of them because sorry. it's uh, cheap fracked gas and uh, it's just a financial thing. It's not a technical thing at all. It's not an it's age horrendous. thing at all. It has nothing to do with age, nothing to do with the technical viability. Yeah. Nothing to do with uh, emissions, obviously. <laughs> nothing to do with anything. This, this is why I keep saying energy markets are stupid. They are, absolutely. Because that's what happened. So took them a long time what to happened, build. What has happened with all of the plants so far? Yeah, it took them a long time to build. Perry, thirteen years, but you know, it, well, probably it, some protests along the way there. Yeah, it's so it's thirteen plus nineteen, so it's it's forty. It will be it it, it it'll be for it, it's forty two years old now. So. That's not old. That's not old. It's you know. It's just a lots of years left. Yeah, you can you can run it for lots at least another left. twenty or so. I mean. And whatever your uh, whatever your subsidy is there that you need is a lot less money than it would take to provide that much clean, reliable power a, in any other way. Do you have any, any idea way? what what kind of money that we're talking about here in the Ohio bill? It's a it's a few hundred million. I don't remember exactly. Um, uh, I probably should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. Oh, let's see. And I don't remember over what period of time that is either. So the company, the company had said it needed to decide by that date whether to purchase fifty-two million of fuel. Okay, no, that's not it. So that's just for the fuel purchasing. A state Senate bill introduced in late June would provide $150 million a year in 2020 to First Energy, which operates the plants outside Cleveland and Toledo. That's less than earlier than an earlier House version that would have provided $179.6 million a year starting in 2019. So, oh, wait, both state bills would also provide subsidies for two 1950-era coal plants. Ah, that's, that's painful, isn't it? That's painful, the day, the day, the day. Yeah, that's part of the reason it's having trouble. I can get that. But, you know, you can fix that next year. Right? Yeah, that's fixable. And you can't fix it. If you close the plant, the nuclear plant, you can't fix that. Yeah, a hundred and fifty million a year. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if they want to replace that, if they want to replace Perry and David Bassey with uh, offshore wind or onshore wind, it's going to cost them a multitude of that. I mean, well, you said how much was uh, seven hundred megawatt? About two and a half, three billion euros. So, it's capacity, so, right? Yeah, it's capacity. It's nameplate. It's not a- yeah, actual. So, boy, boy, how many of those would you need? Um, and it would still be crappy power. <laughs> you would need about five gigawatts of high of of uh, five gigawatts of wind. That's say... yeah. So that's like seven or eight of those things that you just talked about, and that's if they're three billion a piece, and that's. Uh, you know, well over twenty billion. Yeah, so it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at Not all. At all. Th- th- those one hundred and fifty do- uh, one hundred and fifty million dollars sound like a lot of money, but it's really small potatoes. It's actually small potatoes. <laughs> it's it's it, uh, people, pe- but you know, people see millions and 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 they 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 are incapable of actually, you know, understanding what that means and putting it into context. Right. This is ridiculous. Over 150 million. Well, I hope that uh, reason will prevail or people will be convinced or whatever it is so that we can uh, allow that uh, 
those things to continue producing and we can move on to, you know, I sometimes I feel like that, you know, all of the energy that, that we our little cabal of pro nuclear people has is all spent on just trying to maintain status quo. Never mind actually getting anything. Yeah. New built. Yeah. I, and, I would uh, have. I would in the U.S. Here, you know, <laughs> we got one plant. You, you can, you can, you can, you can tell Eric whenever something like this rises. You know, I would love to do a cost comparison. You know, um, just just pointing out the the glaring obvious that people overlook. <laughs> I mean, this is just crazy. Probably, uh, probably a good idea to have that. In, the the a... funny thing is, right? Is, is suppose that you do this for twenty years. I'm just, I'm just taking taking out the calculator here. So let's do twenty years. That's three billion. Yeah. So if you do this for twenty years, it it'll cost the ratepayers or the taxpayers three billion dollars for twenty years. The funny thing is, even suppose that you would keep these plants open for another 20 years. This in the same time that you build offshore wind, you will be planning to replace those same windmills by the time that these subsidies end. Yeah, right. And <laughs> or even before that. You yeah. never know. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> because those offshore ones get just totally beat up. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a very harsh environment. Yeah, it's particularly it, in out by you and in, in the North Sea. Yeah, that, the is North that Sea is? is one of the roughest areas, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very and it's seawater. It's, it's not even because fresh it's water a like funnel. Yeah, be. it's because yeah. it's a funnel. It, it it pushes water. Uh -huh. If it comes from the north, it pushes it inward. But also because it's very shallow the the waves are actually s shorter but more frequent so it's a very rough sea to 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 cross actually so uh yeah, yeah. is there anything well, you would like to add what, Alan? what happens yeah let's hope uh let's hope that uh, reason prevails in ohio there's no guarantees yep. there. I hate to be pessimistic. Nope. <laughs> but, you know. Well, I mean, it's kind of learned to be that way because it's not, uh, you know, so many so many of them have clothes. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to add, Alan? Um, no, I think, uh, I think that's, that's good for this week. Yeah. Okay, then I'll, uh, <laughs> then I'll say goodbye to our viewers. Uh, this is Matthias mm -hmm. Becker, so my dear friend. And this is Alan Metzger. Have a good week, folks. Bye-bye. Yep.